A food allergy diagnosis changes your life. It affects you, your family, your education, your career, your everything. That being said, as with all adversity in life, you have choices on how you can handle it. Some people choose to raise their hands, stand up, and get involved as advocates. They look food allergy right in the face and say, I've got this. And they focus their energy on empowering others to feel the same way. These food allergy warriors range in age and background, but have one thing in common. They turned their food allergy story into action. Now I'm gonna shine a light on them to inspire you to join the fight against food allergies. This is Take Action with Hillary Carter. Hi, and welcome to Take Action. I'm Hillary Carter. I'm a food allergy mom, advocate, and proud member of Ferris Board of Governors. Today, I'm thrilled to chat with Sarah Matheson. She's also a food allergy mom, and she's the co-founder and creative director of Hungry Harry's, a food company that makes baking mixes free from the top 14 allergens. Sarah, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, I'm really lucky that I can call you a friend at this point. We met over a year ago oh at yeah. the Fair Contains uh, Courage at Congress event in DC, yep. right before yep. the world shut down. And you oh, were yeah. there taking photos, which was just amazing. And that's, that's how we met. And we've continued our relationship over all these months. So I'm thrilled to get to chat to you in this way today. But I want to introduce everyone to Sarah. Before we really get into food allergies, give me a little bit about your background, your life, who you are. Okay, so I'm Sarah. Um, for those who don't know, I'm actually Australian, which means I'm exceptionally straightforward. Uh, we, my husband, son, Harry, and I have been in the States since February 2011. You may remember that as the week of Snowmageddon. So we actually left Sydney at 110 degrees, Travelled for 56 hours with 17 bags and a five-year-old and six EpiPens and arrived in Chicago to 21 inches of snow. That's a rough entry. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah, well, yeah. And then three days later, Rob gets in the car, drives to northern Wisconsin, hits another blizzard, and then he's based there for four days a week for four years. So I arrive in the U.S., find, trying, to find, trying to find a home, trying to find a school, trying to find stores that had suitable food. So that's a long story. But professionally, I'm now a documentary photographer. I capture the connection, emotion, and empathy of a community to a cause. So I look at that nuance of connection. It's a second career for me. I went back to school at 47 after a 25 year career in business development for internet and marketing companies, where I was in a, a sales role. So I was in a revenue role. So my role was to increase size and frequency of transactions from brands to member bases. So, you know, I'm kind of layering my corporate career with my photo career and then wrapping hung around the brand of Hungry Harry's. Well, wow, that's amazing. I know that all of it, all of your experience and all of your background is really helping to shape the company now. So let's talk about food allergies. Let's talk about your entry into this world, which I know was a rough one like most of us had. Oh, yeah. And what happened there? Okay, so uh, Australians go to Thailand like Americans go to Mexico. It's where we go for our summer holidays. So we were there when Harry was three. It's an overnight flight from Sydney, so it's really, really easy. So on the second day of our first overseas holiday in Phuket, Harry woke really early and I took him to the cafe in the restaurant, in the hotel, and asked for a cookie for breakfast. And I went, we're on vacation, have a cookie for breakfast. So he ate the cookie and he started to rub his eyes. And I kind of went, mm, hang on, something's going on here. So I took him back to the room and I gave him a little Benadryl and I said, Rob, he's had a bit of a reaction. It's nothing. Don't worry about it. You know, you two go back to bed. I'm going out. It's my day off. It's my first time to have a break. Two working parents, Rob traveling internationally. Just, I want a few hours to myself. So I left. And about 
25, 30 minutes later, I get a phone call from Rob, incredibly distressed, going, he's 3D, he sounds like a seal, something is wrong, he's having trouble breathing. And I'm like, stop, he's having an anaphylaxis, go to the medical center in the hotel now, you have minutes left. So I called the guy that had dropped me off and I offered him an extra hundred Aussie dollars to get me back to the hotel as far as, as he could. So we broke land speed records and I arrived at the medical center. Rob and Harry were there. We were given an injection. We were then put in an ambulance and we went through the back streets of Phuket. And as you know, children, when they have an anaphylaxis or anybody, they expel everything from their body. So I heard gurgling coming and being the mother, I went, I know what's happening here. So I went, and Harry covered yes. the nurse, covered the ambulance, covered Rob. And the guy driving the ambulance was driving along, flicked on the siren, leant back and closed the window between the cab and the ambulance and just went for traffic, for traffic. And I'm sitting there going, and I'm texting my sister going, we're in a nightmare, we're in a nightmare. So the hospital, it's called the Bangkok Hospital in Phuket, and they're used to getting kids who get their first major nut exposure. So it's routine for them. But we had an endocrinologist, a pediatrician, a registrar, an interpreter, and an admin, and it cost $124, and we were there for eight hours. So that was our first exposure. Uh, we flew back to Sydney, and we found out that Harry was dangerously allergic to nuts and intolerant to dairy, gluten, eggs, soy, and seafood. And intolerant to us means a gastrointestinal disturbance, um, where obviously the anaphylaxis is, you know, breathing and heart rate and everything critical that requires the EpiPen. So that was anaphylaxis 101 for us. Yeah, you were, you were thrown in. I, I honestly, our first anaphylactic reaction with my youngest son was so traumatizing. I cannot imagine adding a different country, a different culture, a different hospital system to the mix. Oh, yeah. I mean, thank God they were prepared and this is something oh, they, they were, were trained in. So oh, absolutely. bless everyone. And I want to just give massive shout out to EMTs all over the world because they've been amazing oh, with yeah. us as well. Um, yeah. But I can't imagine. So bravo to you for, you know, saving your son, you and Rob, and getting him the help that he needed. I got chills all over my body when you said you have minutes left. Yeah. Because yeah. that's oh, the yeah. truth. That's what we live yeah. with. But it's, it's, it's hard. Even for me, it's hard to hear. I can't imagine getting that call and having husband, your husband say you have minutes and that's just the reality. So thank you for making that so clear for everyone because it's true. Yeah. Yeah. I think what people don't understand and this, is what gets me really cross and cross is an extra and Aussie expression, but annoyed. I we like have moment, a moments to minutes. Yep. You know? So when we say we need an ambulance now, we mean now when we say the first protocol for a, uh, treating our child if they've had a nut exposure is give them an EpiPen. We mean give it to them and have the second one ready. There's no mucking around here, people. There's no second chances. And that's actually one of the reasons we wear red sneakers for Oakley and we engage with them and, and everything, like when I create photos or when we do photo shoots or anything we cook, we're always wearing our red sneakers for Oakley because the experiences were very similar. It was that biphasic first reaction, not a lot, second. And we were lucky. We're incredibly fortunate. Yeah, so, I feel right. I feel similarly about our first reaction. Um, you know, very, cut it very very close. I actually was going to ask you about your relationship with Red Sneakers for Oakley because I've noticed that we've never talked about this, but I noticed it in so much of your social media. You're a wonderful friend to them um, and really do an amazing job raising awareness. And it's obviously such an incredible organization, and they do just amazing work. But tell me a little bit about your experience with them and how you guys work together, and just anything you want to share. We have a very informal relationship. So I basically go, it's up to organizations like us to and people who've experienced in anaphylaxis to actually share the experience and equip people with tools and, and protocols to survive the situation, which is two EpiPens and, and moments to minutes react quickly. So the attitude that I took is anything creatively where I could illustrate the importance of red sneakers for Oakley, I would do. So whenever I'm baking, I was out having my hair cut the other day, first time in seven months, and my stylist just happened to be wearing red sneakers. So I stopped, took a photo and went, hey, and I explained to everybody in the salon, they were trapped so they had to listen, 
all about red stinkers for Oakley and the importance of understanding the anaphylaxis as moments to minutes. Um, it, you know, they're like Elijah's legacy, which um, Elijah's foundation, which is they live it every day and they have taken their grief and their heartache and they have turned that around and that takes such courage and they relive the challenges every day and they relive the pain every day, but they've managed to put it into such a positive framework and therefore it's up to everybody else to support them. You know, everybody should be wearing red sneakers for Oakley. Absolutely. That's just so well said. And I know Thomas always says not one more child uh, and it just not touches my heart. I can't imagine. And, and the way they've persevered and the resilience is incredible. And so huge props to both those organizations. They're very dear to my heart as well. So thank you for doing that. And by the way, talk about being an advocate. Here you are in the hair salon telling people about okay, food allergies. Sure. So people at home, if you want a really easy, tangible tip, wear your red sneakers and go tell people about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think it's one of the smartest marketing pieces I've seen. And it's very central to the, the child. It's very simple, central to Oakley. And um, they came up with a concept very in the, in the, what I call the grief hours straight afterwards. And they were able to then formalize it and then they lay marketing plans and strategies over the top. But it means something. It's, it has an amazing value set. And then when people decide and realize it, it makes such a difference. It's so true. So everybody watching, go check out Red Sneakers for Oakley. Um, but I want to talk about Harry. I want to talk okay. about oh, Harry. So let's talk about the business. Tell me how you got those creative juices going with your background and with now you're a food allergy mom and you're thinking about all the issues that come along with that. How did Hungry Harry's get born? We were sending Harry to school every day with a lunchbox, yellow of course, and um, inside it were these little muffins and his lunchbox was coming home empty. And I'm like, congratulations, Harry, your lunchbox is empty, like the positive parenting moment. And then he said, and he's broad Aussie accent and he said mom I didn't eat it and I went who ate your lunch mom Vivian <laughs> Harry why is the non-allergy kid eating the allergy kids lunch mom she likes it and he's looking at me he was about eight he was looking at me as if to say huh Hello. Come on, like, mom. Come on, mom. <laughs> You're supposed to be really smart. Anyway, I can remember grabbing, because I was always baking, you know, food allergy mother's bake, morning, mm -hmm. noon, and night. And I, I had muffins on the counter, and I can remember picking one up, and I literally, it feels like the moment, because I was holding it, and I turned to Rob. It was a Friday afternoon, and I said, there's something in this. We have to work it out. I don't know how to right now, but we have to work it out, because if the non-allergy kid wants to eat the allergy kids lunch we've solved so many problems everyone's included and I think it was you know that was the kind of the spark that was the we have to work out how to do this mm -hmm. luckily Rob's background is CPG so he's used to run a toilet paper division for a large company so he's worked with supermarkets all over the country um, and I've worked, I've done everything from America's Cup sponsorship to launch internet companies to photograph elected officials all over the world. So it was kind of a combining of the two. We had never set out to work together. And it can be challenging, I can assure you. We have our moments where we're like, no, I don't want to do it that way. And he goes, but, and I'm like, no. <laughs> so there's lots of what we, Aussie expression of argy bargy, but we get there. And in the the, the essence of it is we understand branding strategy, marketing strategy, how to distribute, how to manufacture. Australia actually has the top 14 standard, which is the same standard as in Europe. So we immediately thought, oh, it's a top 14 product. So we framed it differently from the beginning. So that's kind of how we started. I love it so much. And I've actually shared this with you before, but I am the food allergy mom who tries my very, very best. And I'm, I'm a pretty good cook, but I'm not necessarily an awesome baker. And my youngest son is allergic to all the main things you need to really bake something well. So we're allergic to all gluten grains and dairy and soy and egg and for a long time coconut. Yep. And so it was just a mess. And I was the mom who would try my hardest to bring a wonderful birthday treat in that was safe for my kid. 
and watch all the other kids take one bite and dump it in the trash. And my heart would break because I wanted him to feel normal and I wanted it to be good and tasty. Yeah. So now Hungry Harry's has saved my life. So thank you. I'm sitting here. I have all five. I brought, I brought, <laughs> I brought some, you know, show and tell today. I have all five okay. in my pantry. Yeah. I buy yeah. them from your website. I buy them from Amazon. You did very kindly send you the chocolate one as part of a beautiful um, food allergy package. awareness month package. So thank you. But we do live on this stuff all the time. And I just say that as a true, true fan and grateful food allergy mom. So thank you so much. And it's great that you guys have this professional background, which is going to make this work because our community needs this to work. And so tell me yeah. about like the business. Where are you guys now? What's coming next? Okay, we're in 200 stores. So I'll go back and Amazing. just give you a quick overview of, of um, so we launched it Nourished in 2019 and that was in June. And then we kind of pitted along. We're just getting things together. We got Amazon up and run, up and going and then along came COVID. So COVID was incredibly disruptive to our, our supermarket channel and also to Amazon because Amazon basically put a freeze on product if mm -hmm. it wasn't PPE. Um, or toilet paper. So we kind of went, okay, how are we gonna how are we gonna leverage this time? We're all at home. Well, I'm gonna bake like crazy. And we focused on our direct consumers through our website and also establishing really strong relationships with our home bakers. And so we have 35 of them all over the country. And they are, as Rob would say, bolted on loyalists. They're amazing. They will, you know, we've got a a, pre, a pretzel um, launching on Saturday and it was, we gave the recipe to one of our home bakers and said, could you do this? And she went, oh, I'd love to. Thanks so much. Oh my God, I've been waiting for this. So the, you know, it's joyous to work on a brand that is a need, not a want. And we are shelf stable, pantry staples, every allergy family, every supermarket. And if you want to cook a muffin or pancakes, or make a cake that everybody will want to eat. So all of that, oh, bake something separate for one lot of your family and something for the allergy kid, that goes. We, we're regular food. So you bake one chocolate cake that everybody will eat. And that has been enlightening for our customers. And we're very fortunate, and I'm very old school marketing in some of the things that I do. So each month, I literally pick the phone up and I ring our customers. So I have run customers from, from there. We've got beautiful customer that's right on the Mexican border in Texas. We've got customers in the Northwest. We've got customers in the Northeast. We've got customers in Alabama. We've got customers in Kansas, all over the place. So I talk to them and we have 30, 40, 50 minute conversations. And it's like, oh yeah, I've had the same experience. Oh yeah, yep, uh, right. So I had a geologist go, how does your school react? Oh, you know, you've got IEPs and 504s, that's what they're called in Illinois, that um, that allow you, that have legal framework around keeping your child safe at school. But, you know, have you actually tried framing it this way, that when your child is in the classroom, you want to keep all kids safe, not just your own, because you really don't want these other children to see your child have an anaphylaxis, because that's a really big kind of confronting episode for a non-allergy family. So why don't we just keep everybody safe? And that type of insight and those types of conversations, one, they're, they're beautiful, they're emotionally rewarding, but then we realize, you know, this is gonna go forward. So more supermarkets, we're waiting to hear from three major groups. We had an amazing meeting with a, group, a supermarket group yesterday that has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of stores. So. That the supermarket lead time are, you know, it's three, six, sometimes nine months in advance. But we're like, oh, that's okay, as long as we know it's coming. Um, we Amazon's all back up and running, which is great. And we sell singles, three packs and six packs. And then we sell through our website as well. And then we're just starting to look at the B2B relationships. So we're talking to hotels about food allergy families who come in and stay. And there's two or three hotel groups that we're talking to that are really interested. And we're talking to an entertainment venue and we're talking to a hotel, uh, to a hospital chain. And then we're talking to an education system. So we're busy. You're very busy. And all of this is amazing news. And it's wonderful how broadly you're thinking about it. Because as we know, Food allergy follows us everywhere, right? So the thought of being able, just let's start with 
the lowest level, the thought of being able to walk through a grocery store and yeah. find something that works for my for my family, for our families, it's rare yeah. when I find a, pro- a product, a packaged good where I'm like, oh, this really is safe. That's rare. Yeah. And when I do yeah. find that, by the way, I always go find the manager of that grocery store and I say, thank you so much for carrying allergy-friendly brands. So yeah. note to everybody, if you see Hungry Harry's, or any other food allergy brand, go thank the staff because I think that goes a long way for them to know that people care. Oh, yeah. Um, and I love that you're building community because what you're doing, reaching out to parents, I bet there's probably people who don't know that Harry is actually real. I know you have it on the back. We see his adorable picture and his story, but you know that connection I'm sure is, is really important. And that's just a whole nother layer of advocacy on top of your business, which is just amazing because many, 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 many food allergy parents that I've talked to with their lacking is connection and community and they yep. feel alone and isolated. So that's so important what you're doing. And I think that's going to build this brand in such amazing ways. Yeah. I know what it's like. Well, like when we moved from Australia, I literally had to go and find food again. So I was, I would stand in say Mariano's or I would stand in Jewel or I'd stand in Whole Foods. And I'm like, why can't I just go to one place? But it's a completely different supermarket marketplace here. In Australia, we have two major players that are 80% of the market. Here, there are 14 major players. And then it changes regionally. So going to roll out to a supermarket network, we actually work through Kehi, who is our distributor. And that makes our life a lot easier. And we run out of two DCs. So we have DCs in Illinois and DCs in Texas, and we're across the Midwest, and then we will expand. So being very geo-specific as to where we roll out is part of our strategy because we're only a team of three full-time people and two part-timers. So we're tiny. It's going to be a very interesting six to 12 months to see where we are in 12 months time. Well, I'm so excited to see, and I would love to loop back to the home bakers for just a minute because I've seen you post on social media and I see people with their beautiful yellow sweaters and the different creations that they've come up with. Tell me just a little bit more. You have 35, which is amazing. Are you looking for more? Is there a way people can sort of submit themselves to you if they're interested in being a part of this? Tell me just a little more about that program. If anybody's interested in being a home baker, they can email hello at hungryharrys.com. That's actually the email through the website. So that's our general inquiry line. They can inquire that way. And I would gladly take anybody and, you know, I'd love to meet new people. So our home bakers range literally from three years of age right up to mums that are in their 50s. They are food allergy mums with children with single allergies, multiple allergies, EOE, other digestive conditions. And they are in a situation where they are now building their children's diets with Hungry Harry's as the centre because it is free of 14. So one thing we find is you know food allergies can be very a very heavy topic to talk about and the, one of the reasons we are bright yellow and cheery besides being you know very visual and may, means that you stand off stand up or on shelf it's joyous it's fun it's light it's sunny so we wanted to ensure that all of our conversations were about the learning the growth the sharing the community as much as we acknowledge that there is a lot of anguish and pain, let's focus on what we build and how we can be better and how we can go and conquer the world. Like we've taken Harry back to Thailand three times because we tested the medical system. We knew it was okay. We tested the reaction of the hotel. Everything was good. So with our home bakers, we talked to them about, yes, you can. Yes, you can have a pretzel. Yes, you can have beer gluten-free, beer-battered fish and chips, and that's coming up in the next few weeks. Yes, you can. Um, so and so we work with them on, hey, here's five packs of our allergy-friendly baking mix. Bake whatever you want. Use it the way you want. Bake the way you need to bake. We're not going to tell you what to do. We'll make suggestions, but just give it a try and then share with us what you do. And it's the first time that food allergy families get freedom around cooking. And that was one of the greatest insights for me when I started the Home Bakers just over 12 months ago. And it was because usually with, with food allergy baking, it's so restricted and it's so tight and you can't have this and you can't have that, where we go, hang on a minute, yes, you can, yes, you can. 
Bake, use whatever milk you need, whatever egg replacer you need. Bake the way you need to bake. Just give it a go. And the, you know, I have mums on the phone, which is going, I've done it. I've, we've made a cake. My child had a birthday cake. We have one particular family in Michigan and the young son had pancakes for the first time. It's a rite of passage to have pancakes. So I just need, you know, I just need like four different rounds of pancakes for Grayson because he's so obsessed. And we've been doing the waffles for a long time, but he was like, can you just make pancakes? And I actually had you in my ear. They're like, pancakes are comfort and they're a rite of passage. I was like, yes, we can. <laughs> Exactly. And by the way, so I made them in bulk, kept them in the yep. fridge, and then I just been popping yep. them in the toaster oven every morning and then making little sun butter sandwiches and he eats them yep. on the way to school. Yeah, fantastic. So easy. easy. Yeah. yeah. So the whole thing is with food allergies, food becomes something to fear. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm not going through my life with the fear I had huh, in that ambulance. I'm not doing that. So it's got to be joyous and we have every right for our food to be joyous and we have every right to share something with somebody else and for it to be joyous. And Harry's little friend Vivian taught me that. She, she was like, you know, she walk into school and she walked up to me and go, muffins? Like, are you supposed Aww. to deliver these? Which is gorgeous. Muffin lady. <laughs> Muffin lady. And when we were considering rolling out Hungry Harry's, we tested it with the permission of the parents on all the kids at school. There were a range of allergies. There were a range of dietary styles. Um, and we just try this. What do you think of this? What do you think of that one? Do you like this one? How's this one look? What Do you like that cake? And everything would disappear. So we're like, oh. And then when we went to the nourished event, we did 4,500 muffins and 2,000 pancakes in just over two days. Wow. And I'm like, okay, all right, I, I'm, I'm really happy with our mixes. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go production. That's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. Well, I love, yeah. I love hearing all of that. And you said about being afraid of food has sort of been such a huge part of our family's journey too, that we don't want to live in, I don't want my kids to live in fear of food. I don't want to live in fear exactly. of food. Exactly. And most That's of the time, true. many, many years in, after all of our training and education and experiences and all of the ways we've sort of gotten ourselves in control of this, a huge majority of the time we don't live in fear of food, but yeah. every now and then something sneaks up, as, as you know. Yeah. My son had a really horrible anaphylactic reaction in December. And since then he's been, you know, asking more questions and a little less trusting. And that's in some ways good because you need them to learn from it and be responsible, but it's also sort of sad to see. But he will say to me, we, we make bread, we make pizza, we make muffins, pancakes, all the things with Hungry Harry's. And what he says to me before I put anything on his plate, is that Hungry Harry's? And I'm like, yes, it is. And he's like, okay. And so you are giving families the ability to not fear food. And that's just huge so thank you from all of us <laughs> it's amazing it started with us trying to solve our own problem and then by realizing it we we're solving our own problem and we, well, we're not the only one there's how much 89 million people impacted by food allergies with 32 million that have life-threatening food allergies we need to share this so the, the transition from, oh, we're using it ourselves to, okay, let's test it at an event. Oh, okay, great response. Let's go into production. Was, you know, it was like, oh, Rob and I were looking at each other going, okay, uh, right, we're going to do this. Right. You know, that's you know how we were, mm, we're, we're Australians in the US. We're in our 50s. Okay. And he went, you don't normally start a business in your 50s. Like, what's okay. We'll be fine. We're fine. We'll be right. And we're doing it. I love it. And you know, what's really cool is that I keep hearing sort of similar learnings from different all-star advocates and it's, it's coming yep. out with your story as well, which is like, first of all, what problem do you have? What issue are you having in your food allergy life? What, are, what do you need to fix? And in that, is there a larger business or a larger advocacy platform that can come out of that. And, you know, obviously not everyone is going to go start a huge food company, but that's something if you're watching at home and you're really thinking about wanting to get involved and not knowing how, think about your own life and, and what's working, what's not working, where can you go fix any problem and then make that bigger? That's just a huge takeaway. 
the second thing that always comes up is just go for it. Like you said, you're like, we're Australians. We're in our fifties. What are we doing? But you know <laughs> that there's a need and yeah, it, it's it a needs need to happen. Us. You're the only ones who can do it. And it's going amazingly well. So don't let the little negativity in your head or don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Just go for it. I hear, I hear those two things a lot. And so I wanted to just like reiterate that for the audience because it's such important learnings in the world of advocacy, if not just in life. Yeah. We stay, we have stayed very, very, very focused. And that comes from, you know, decades and decades of corporate experience. So what's your objective? Who's your target? What are your channels? What are your margins? Do you have a gross margin? If you don't have a gross margin, don't. Um, what's your two-year plan? What's your four-year plan? Are you trademarked? Have you got a good attorney? Who are you where are you getting your funding? What stage are you in about when? What team do you need? So there's a lot involved. Um, the one thing I would offer to some guidance I would offer to people if they're considering doing something like this, there are two changes you need to make. You need to give up discretionary time and you need to give up discretionary spend a year or two before you start your business. That's so smart. So it is all encompassing. And when you are, you know, for the first year, it was the three of us, Rob, myself, and Nate, who's, who is our chef and also does all the logistics and does the website. Um, and then we've taken on Jen, who's an amazing videographer and does social. And Andy's just joined us and he's an amazing copywriter. And then we have a guy called Chris, who's doing our digital. So we're a very small team for what we're creating and the level of sophistication that we present when we present to supermarkets like we did yesterday, you know, because like, well, we're planning on doing this and we've got some insights here and it's, it's not as easy as, oh, I've got a great recipe and I want to share it. There's, there has to be a lot of thinking into it. Um, so please do the thinking. Get yourself a fantastic advisor. And we're very, very fortunate that we have Ken Harris, who was the, he's the ex-chairman of Enjoy Life and ran a recently called Cantar, which is a supermarket research company. So he advises us and we go, okay, we're thinking of, and he goes, yep, you're on the money. Or we'll go, we'll make a comment. He goes, no, you need to go back this way. So we listen. And so we listen to people who are more experienced than we are. So it's that blend of passion with intent to satisfy the need not a want, and then the ability to scale. So that's another thing that smaller brands really struggle with is how do you go from this amazing mix to servicing Walmart? That's a really big jump. Big so jump. Huge. You, how do you go from your beautiful packet and do, being in a farmer's market to actually just servicing the local, the local supermarkets? That's a really big jump. So... The, the scaling, you've got to, before people do this, please get the scaling down pat, you know, please understand how you're going to scale because otherwise it's fraught with difficulty. Such good advice. I'm thrilled that you shared all that so much wisdom. And I know that's going to help a lot of people as they're hopefully thinking about great business ideas with food allergy community. And I want to also, I want to go back to you and your photography and visual storytelling, because that's, such an important part. So my background is PR and corporate communications. So I happen to just love that kind of thing and I'm drawn to it. Um, I also just know that the world is all visual at this point, especially after the year of COVID where everything is video yep. because yep. we had no choice. And yep. I see your social media community really blossoming and the beautiful work you put out. So talk to me just a little more about how your background in both marketing and photography is now helping with the beautiful visual storytelling you're doing with Hungry Harry's. I think one of the most important thing about photography is to open people's perspective. You give them a little bit of technical guidance and then you go, take what you feel. You know, it is about capturing connection, emotion and empathy uh, because they're the issues that people connect on. We don't necessarily connect on um, shape, but we connect on emotion. So take something that makes you feel good and then share that. Take the moment that feels good to you because somebody else has the same moment. So we work with our home bakers and we give lots of them tips on, okay, natural light, go to put the cake you've just baked near the window, make sure it's 
direct sunlight, but not too harsh, make, don't, ha don't have harsh shadows, things like that. But also understanding the concepts of like negative space, not having too much in a photo, because the balance between the, the, the focal point and negative space will make it so much more powerful. So it is, you know, the joy that I get to do is that I get to illustrate how powerful photography can be, how powerful visual storytelling is, and how it allows you to layer the story. So there is a brand story, there's the tactical story, there's a strategic story, and then there's the educational story we tell. So, you know, photos and video and graphics allow us to do that. About 30% of our feed is from our home bakers. So we very much lift them up and say to them, you are good enough, your work is good enough to be on here. And if you need help, we'll help you so your work becomes good enough to be on here. And that means the world to them. Because, That's got to be very again, empowering. Amazing. Because first of all, we're saying you're developing amazing photo skills. And then next we're saying you're able to cook and share something that nurtures your child. And then we're able to say, we're going to validate you as a food allergy mom. And that doesn't happen very often. No. That's amazing. Because I was, I recently did a tour around um, the Midwest and I visited a pile of, um, uh, of our customers and a pile of supermarkets where we're on shelf. And one of the things the food allergy mum said is that nobody sees me because I'm always in the back. I'm always the contingency planner. I'm always the one going, kind of doing the manoeuvring so that I can have my child in the environment where they're not really welcome, but they're supposed to be there. So we try and smooth that path. And she's like, with Hungry Harry's, my kid's on the soccer team and another kid on the soccer team. His mum now buys Hungry Harry's and all the kids on the soccer team now eat Hungry Harry's. And I'm like, yes, that's the point. Everybody's included. And it's something as simple as a muffin. Something as simple that it, it is beautifully sourced it's well presented it the the mixes react um well to any milk or whatever you want to bake with but everybody can eat it and that that feeling of being included when for the food allergy family so much of it is oh you know be over there or oh really you, you're here again you're going to disrupt or you, you want all this attention because your kid's got an allergy i don't want this attention i just want my kids safe and it, having something as simple as a cake or a muffin or a, 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 a cupcake can change that dynamic. It just, it lights up children. And that's been one of the joys of doing what we're doing. Well, and I think what you're saying is so important and something that maybe the non-food allergy world doesn't understand is that Food is supposed to be something that brings people together. You think about holidays and weddings and Sunday dinner, you know, it's always around the table. It's always with food. That's supposed to be community. It's supposed to be a way to show love. It's supposed to be a way to be together. And food allergies really put a wrench in all that <laughs> oh, yeah. and make it hard for our families to eat the same thing or to feel safe. And that is just really challenging. So it really is true that something as simple as a cupcake that everybody can have the same thing really does bring a lot of comfort and joy and allow us food allergy families to go back to what food is supposed to be, which is just yeah. a way to be Enjoy together it. and enjoy each other. Yeah. 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 So well, that's also, we both know that we cannot run in states of high anxiety. It's not healthy for us. Right. You know? We have to have protocols around for us to feel safe um and i will admit that i redid harry's lunchbox three times last night because today is his first day in the house in 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 schooling at the school so i'm like right okay is this enough food right no that's not big enough i changed it three times and i'm like okay it's gonna be all right he's got food for the day um so i know what it's like um but we can't let our kids, you know, our kids have every right to travel the world. Our kids have every right to reach the moon and do whatever career they want to do. But if food allergies are in, the, if they've always had food allergies in the way to opportunity, that's not fair. That's really not fair. So 100%. If, if something is simple, 
as a safe muffin or cake or food that allows them to operate as normal people, um, then they can go and do whatever they want to do. I love that. And you mentioned Harry, and I would love to talk about Harry if that's okay with you. So we have his picture on the back and I, yep. um, I've i been lucky enough to, to meet him briefly on Zoom. He is such an adorable, yep. well-spoken kid. So kudos to you. <laughs> um, he's amazing, but I know that he helps you with Hungry Harry. So tell me a little bit about what his role has been as you and Rob have developed this company. Cause I think that's fantastic that you include him. So when we did the physical events, he was always on the stand with us and he would talk. He had a little chef's uniform with a little Hungry Harry's badge on it. He was there flipping pancakes. And if you go back in the Instagram feed, you can actually see photos of him at the Nourish Festival making hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pancakes. Um, so he actually connected with the, the other kids and they were like, there's a kid that's a chef that's got food allergies. And it was like, again, it's validation. So recently he, he has been involved in some of our photography. He taste tests everything and he just goes, don't like that one. Like, okay, right, here we go, more testing. Um, he's in schooling now and he's 15. So he's really redefining his role as to how he wants to be involved. We have all of the business conversations with him. So that's amazing. So he gets really engaged with, okay, so which supermarket are we talking to? So what shelf are we going to be on? What's the gross margin on that? So he's incredibly involved in the kind of the business side of it, which is he, which is great. And it's an amazing world for him, but also his friends. We have one particular friend who is always saying to us, so how's Harry Hungry Harry going? Where, where are you in now? Have you, where have you expanded to? And so this group of children have seen this brand, this, you know, these muffins that they saw at school develop into a brand, now being hung on Amazon, on a website, now being sold across supermarkets across the country. And they're like, oh, that's what entrepreneurship looks like. And I'm like, yeah, 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 80 hours a week. That's what it looks like. But they can now formalize this concept, this very elusive romantic concept of entrepreneurship. I'm going to be an entrepreneur. Really? Right. Okay. What does that mean? This is what it means. You take an idea, you do a business case, you put strategies around it, you find really good partners and you bring on, you know, people that we've worked with and you create a business that can grow. And Harry's seen it along the way as to his friends. And that's an amazing education for them all. And just such an amazing gift to show him that anything is possible. His parents can do it. He can do it. He's being exposed to this amazing world of entrepreneurship and advocacy. And, you know, the sky's going to be the limit for him. So that's amazing. Yeah. I think um, he gets to frame things, which is important. That's so important. It's all in how you look at it, right? You get to choose yeah. how you decide to handle all of this and, and you're setting such an amazing example for him of positivity. And I just love the whole story. And as you know, we love, love the brand. Um, so thank you for all you're doing. I could easily chat with you all day. We could pour a glass yep. of wine. We could be here oh, yeah, yeah. for the rest of the day. <laughs> but I know that you're a busy lady. And so I want to wrap it up. But I would like to just ask you, we've already hit on so many amazing tips for advocates who might be watching or people who are thinking about getting involved. But if you have any last thoughts, whether it's tips for people who want to get involved in any kind of advocacy or any message you want to give to food allergy families, any last thoughts, you have the floor, Sarah. Okay. So I, as you know, we met at the fly-in last year, um, Courage at Congress. And I have to say, I thought that was, and I've done quite a lot of work on Capitol Hill and worked with electeds all over the country. For food allergy advocates to walk onto Capitol Hill to meet with their representatives and to see the look in their eyes to say, I've got this influence, I have this power, that is amazing. So if there's anybody who wants to get involved in advocacy, I would say, look at your schedule, identify your discretionary time, and then commit whatever you can for six to 12 months, because this is not changing laws, changing people's perception, changing rules, or influencing a process, it's not two weeks, it's six to 12 months at a minimum. So if you wanna get engaged, look at your schedule, identify the time and commit to it. Commit to yourself and to the organization, whichever which one you choose. For the entrepreneur, 
again, I would come back is identify your discretionary time and your discretionary spend, adjust those before you launch your business. Because that's, yeah, because otherwise it's very complicated. You have a lot of moving parts. And then I would say, get yourself a very good advisor and listen a lot. Such wonderful advice. You are an all-star and I'm so grateful that we had this time together and I can't wait for people to get to watch this interview. So tell everybody where they can find you, all the places they can find you and Hungry Harry's online. Okay, so hungaries.com is where you can find all of our story and our beautiful mixes. You can also buy on Amazon, just search for Hungry Harry's Baking Mixes. Um, and in local supermarkets, again, we're in supermarkets down, basically down the middle of the country. So all over the Midwest and all over Texas. So you can find the exact supermarkets on our website. So go to the store locator. And please follow us on social. So it's Hungry Harry's Foods on Instagram and Facebook and Hungry underscore Harry's on uh, Twitter and then just Hungry Harry's on Pinterest. So Pinterest is full of beautiful recipes as well. But uh, yeah, hello with Hungry Harry's if you have any questions or if you're interested in becoming one of our home bakers. Thank awesome. You. So many ways to, to access Hungry Harry's. So thank you for all of that. Uh, and as you mentioned, you know, there's so many ways to get involved in advocacy. So I always say go to the FAIR website, which is foodallergy.org. There's so many opportunities to get involved. So check that out. Uh, and there's so much amazing digital content these days. So check out FAIR's Living Teal channel on YouTube. Um, and if you'd like to follow along with my journey, I'm on Instagram at Hillary Toll Carter. And my website is also Hillary Toll Carter. Sarah, this was a joy and a pleasure. I've been looking forward to this. And thank, thank you, you again for Hungry Harry's. Thank you for all of the work you do for the food allergy community. You are truly a gem. And uh, thank you to you and Rob and to Harry. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Look after yourself. Have a good day and get some sunshine this weekend. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for watching. Take action. Thank you.